everybody, this is Pastor Ben Lim with The Breaker, where we are believing for breakthrough in every area of your life. The Bible says that he is Baal Perizam, the Lord of the breakthrough. And today, our very special guest, the one and only woman of God, Real Talk Kim, is with us today. This episode is going to change your life. So I want you to share. I want you to bring your friends on, because today we're going to talk about breakthrough in your leadership. Now, everybody, let's welcome to Woman God Real Talk Kim to the show. God bless you, man. Hello, Pastor Ben. I am so excited to be with you. So, so, so honored. Oh, it's our honor, ma'am. I mean, we love you. We love the grace of God on your life and just oh. how you've been killing it in, in an incredible way. But I feel like, again, people who are having success or fruit, I mean, they had to pay the price for it. Isn't that right? Yeah. And no, uh, you're a pastor. I'm a pastor. Uh, not only that, but you're a, a woman trailblazer. So I know there's a lot of, you know, things that you've given up and sacrificed that a lot of people don't even know, talk about. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, can we just talk about that? I mean, yeah. you know, the price, especially even for yourself as a woman leader, as, as a woman of God. Yeah. You know, it's so crazy because I was raised in United Pentecostal and I was raised in a preacher's home where they did not believe in women preachers. And uh, so I just never even assumed that I could ever be a preacher, a woman preacher. Um, so I was going to settle for being a worship pastor. And I remember uh, probably at 36 years old, around 36 years old, um, I walked through something that really transpired in my life that really hit, I hit rock bottom. At 36 years old, I hit rock bottom and I found out who the rock was at the bottom, which was Jesus for myself. And when I found Jesus for myself, I started praying and saying, God, I know that you've called me to be, you call me to be different. Like, I know that you have called me because because thieves don't rob empty vaults. The enemy hasn't been after me my whole life, you know, to, be, to rebel and everything else. If he didn't have a purpose, if he, if he didn't know I had a purpose. And so during that season, I began to pray for boldness. I said, God, give me boldness. God, get my mouth under control. Get my spirit under control. Help me to get focused because I don't want to miss what you would have for me. I never dreamed, Pastor Ben, that at 40 years old, at 36 years old, I moved back with my mom and dad, lost everything with my two sons. And at 40 years old, literally, is when I preached my very first sermon. And now I look and I, and I went full-time ministry at 40 years old. And I remember in that season coming out of the gates into full-time ministry with a boldness and deliverance. Like I, I truly felt God, I, I was free from people. I was free from what people thought about me. My heart was pure. There was no anger, no bitterness. I wasn't driven because I used to really pray for God to help my emotions because women are driven by their emotions and so I really began to focus. And when I did, I realized that throughout these last eight years that I've walked through things, I'm telling you, when you've got a call of God on your life, you cannot be a whip. When you're called to pastor, you cannot be a whip. you got to know how to pray. you got to know how to intentionally spend time with God. you got to know how to let people go out of your life and not take it personal. It's not personal. It's spiritual. And you got to learn to stay focused. And I think that's what I've discovered in the last eight years of ministry. I'm doing what God's called me to do in pastoring is that I've learned to focus on Jesus and nothing else. Focus on Jesus and nothing else. And when all hell is breaking loose, I buckle up and buckle my seatbelt because I know when the devil starts turning up the heat and, 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 and situations start happening in your life, that's when you got to go fast. You got to pray and you got to get focused because you're about to go to another level. And so I think in ministry and in leadership, you got to figure out, am I willing to go in all with all skin? Yeah. I got to go in with everything. I can't be I can't be no pansy. I can't be no, I can't be pitiful. I got to be powerful and I got to do it with keeping my heart right in the process. So that's what I've done in the last eight years. I've, I've learned to get focused. I've learned to not listen to the noise, but focus on Jesus. And that's the, that's the game changer. My gosh, Jesus is always the game changer. Yeah. He, he is the game in a sense that he's a game changer. And I believe many people watching right now, uh, our Lord Jesus is about to change your game. He's about to change the game. 
He's giving you a new name, a new brand, a new anointing, a new mantle for this season. But unfortunately, too many people, even today and beyond, uh, there's something that they're missing. I mean, they've hit rock bottom. They're at their lowest of low. You said at 36, you were at rock bottom. But from then to 40, there was a transfiguration that took place. And I feel like today, we need people who have that aptitude who are willing to be adjusted and be forged in the fire. Because, I mean, there's so much opportunity, but there's also so much opposition. And I love this, man, because, you know, uh, my spiritual grandmother, who's Catherine Coleman, she would always say, you have to be willing to pay the price. You do. I believe right now there's so much reward for those who are willing to pay the price. Come on, Pastor. You know, I, I've I've just discovered in life that focus is where it's at. You gotta you gotta realize that whenever God is using you and God has set you apart. When God has got a call of God on your life, that you have to be intentional about not looking at the few that are the haters or the few that don't support you or the few that are talking about you or the few that don't believe in you. you got to get focused on what God's doing on the peripheral. There are people all over this world that he will send in your life because he trusts you. But the enemy is going to turn up the heat and make sure all those people that you need approval from, those people that you want to fit in with, those ministries you want to preach at, that 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 uh, person you want to take your cookie business and put it out, whatever it is, the enemy will turn up the heat because it's a little fox that spoiled the vine. You got to get to a place where you begin to dissect. I will not allow my past or I will not allow the people that are closest to me to stop me. When God called you, he called you. He did not make a conference call to call you. He right. called you, which means nobody else is going to understand necessarily in your peripheral. So what you have to do is you got to focus and you got to get so focused that you're willing to pay the price. You're willing to not be liked. You're willing to not be able to go hang out for a Super Bowl Sunday some nights because somebody over here needs you to pull them out of hell you know you gotta decide and i'm gonna tell y'all all something it ain't easy but it's worth it it's mm -hmm. worth it the, the the fight the call the challenge oh man the harder you fall the higher you bounce when you start getting your mentality of god's using me and i refuse to give up right and you stop throwing in the towel you throw in the towel every other day i quit i quit god ain't moving quick enough everybody's getting ahead but me he is throwing, this is what God's doing today. He is throwing back that towel and saying, wipe your face, you're almost there. So you can't give up. Giving up's an option, but it ain't ours. When we're called of God and we are called for such a time as this, we fight. We fight on our knees and we fight for the people that God's called us to. Ooh, you preach it, ma'am, you preach it. <laughs> now, now, you keep repeating this word focus, which I, I so love. I feel like, yeah. you know, with the pandemic, or as I call it, the plandemic. Uh, yeah. Things going on, so many people have become distracted, whether it's with politics, uh, you know, whether it's with different issues taking place. But, you know, there's so much distraction taking place, and I feel like God is birthing a new breed of leaders, of apostolic yeah. prophetic evangelists, who are willing to be innovative, who are willing to be recreated and be even more effective today than ever before. Talk to us real quick. What, what do we need to do to continue to be focused rather than being distracted by everything that's going on in the world? No matter what, it may seem like we're not getting the breakthrough or seeing the fruit, the results that we thought. But what, what do we need to do today, this next generation leader? What do we need to do to continue to be focused? Man, I think we got to bleed people. You know, we got to we got to we got to know what our focus is and stay there. I remember in March last year, whenever all of a sudden they were like, uh, it's a social distancing. Everybody go into your houses. Everybody close. And I'm thinking they said seven days. I'm thinking seven days. I'm a hus. My hustle is holy. OK, like I am. I, I, I ain't scared of nothing. Yeah, and so I'm just like starting this and doing this. And I'm 41 engagements last year. The biggest platform, everything that I had dreamed there, I'd finally made it. 
and all of them started canceling. And I remember thinking, oh my God, 41 events canceled. And I found myself like, God, what? He said, Kimberly, he said, I want you to begin to refocus. So here's the key. Anytime you find yourself at a place that you don't understand, you got to stop trying to figure it out and start praying for God to be able to lead you to where he wants you to go. Because it might be a surprise to us, but it's not a surprise to God. Yeah. I immediately started an I church. I immediately started connect groups. I got connect groups in Alaska. I got connect groups in Africa. I got connect groups. Immediately, we started branching out and raising up leaders. And so what did I do at that moment? I could have stayed in my house. I could have cried. I started a, a RTK inner circle mentor group for women ministers, trailblazers. I mean, I immediately started figuring out what can I do stuck in this house? And I think that's what we have to do, Pastor. We have to start looking at, stop looking at what, went, what, what didn't work out. Stop looking at, they didn't like me. Stop taking things personal and begin to look at what's in front of you. We've got Oprah show right here, me and you. Like she paying billions of dollars to be on TV. But me and you right here being obedient to Jesus, we can air this on Facebook and get 200, 300,000 people from all over the world watching us, but it wouldn't happen if we weren't obedient. We wouldn't happen if we didn't look at this avenue right here, right? If we want to just lay in our bed and be depressed because our job furloughed us or because we didn't get a stimulus check or because our unemployment, no, there's always something in front of you that God is handing you and saying, if I wouldn't have closed that door, if I wouldn't have allowed the pandemic, if I wouldn't have allowed the divorce, if I wouldn't have allowed the bankruptcy, if I wouldn't have allowed the death, if I wouldn't have allowed these things to happen in your life, then it wouldn't push you to your breakthrough and push you into your next season. And so I think what we have to do is stop looking at what we don't get, what we don't have. Stop comparing ourselves to everyone else on social media and begin to use what we got. Believe in ourselves because God has called us. Man don't got to qualify us, right? It doesn't matter what they think about us, right? He called us. And as long as you keep showing up and saying yes, and pushing the live button on Facebook, pushing the live button on Instagram, pushing the, honey, what? God will open the windows of heaven over your life because he is waiting for your yes. And you watch what will happen. Ooh, my gosh. I, I've always said this, man. When we say yes, Jesus says the amen to fulfill it, execute it. And, uh, you know, all, all God wants is our yes, our willingness as Catherine Coleman said, God's not looking for gold or silver vessels, for willing vessels. He's looking for your willing yes. As yes. Weak, as weak as your yes seems to be, he loves it. And he can partner with anything that you give him. He will multiply the five loaves and the two fish. I love what you said, <laughs> because one of the principles that I live by is what's right in front of you. I love yeah. what you said. The kingdom yeah. of heaven is at hand. And so the principle that I live by is everything you need is right in your reach. That's the kingdom yes. of every born again believer. It's right in your reach. Or as God's amen. Or as God spoke to Moses and said, what's in your hand? It's an average dead wood. It's a staff. It's a rod. There's nothing supernatural about it. But when you master your natural. Come on, pastor. That to Jesus. God will add the super to the natural. <laughs> That's what God's about to do. Supernatural businesses. Yes. Supernatural ministries. Come on. Yes. Fathering. Supernatural fathering. Supernatural teachers. God is going to use whatever little dead, uh, inconsistent thing is in your hand, and He's going to anoint it to do miracles. Come on. Uh, there, there's such a, a powerful synergy here. Yes. I, I love. Yes. Yes. I just love the anointing on your life. Yes. So we're talking about breakthrough in leadership because yes. some watch right now don't even know how to be leaders. Uh, but I feel like, I love your name, Real Talk Kim. Yeah. I, I, I feel like too many people are trying to fabricate or be a filter, or they're trying to fake it till they make it. But I realize when you are real with yourself and with God, then that's where God begins to anoint you and bless you. He's not going to bless a fake you. He's not going to bless a you you're trying to be. He's no. going to bless the real you. So yes. talk to us just even about your name, Real Talk Kim, and yes. how it is today for us to be real. Yeah. You know, Pastor, I spent so many years of my life until I was 36 years old trying to be a, a Ann Taylor. 
when God created me to be a Betsy Johnson. And it was so hard because I wanted to be like every other pastor. I wanted to be every other pastor's wife. I wanted to be, you know, whatever. I just wanted to fit in the mold. I just wanted to be accepted. And when I, when I lost everything and people literally left my life, I remember praying specifically because people will ride with you as long as you got gas in that car. But the minute that gas runs out, where they at? You better learn to depend on Jesus. And I remember in that season saying, God, I want to know who I am. And I remember, Pastor, it was when when uh, when uh, MySpace was still popular and a quiz came out and the quiz was 25 things that about me. And we were telling you crazy stuff about ourselves that nobody really cared about. And I remember looking at that quiz and it said, what's your favorite color? And I couldn't even tell you what my favorite color was. I had lost myself in ministry. I had lost myself in trying to work this marriage, you know, uh, work this thing out that was not working out. I was I was so lost. And I remember telling God, I want to know 25 things about me. And you know, that's how God is. All you got to do is begin to pray specifics. I said, God, I want to be real talk. I want to really be able to express what you would have for me to say. I don't want to have to depend on people's tithe. I don't have to depend on people uh, giving me money so I'll say what they want me to say. I want you to get me to a place I never dreamed in a million years. He would have me a five-time bestseller author in eight years. I never dreamed that I would be standing on the biggest platforms in America. I never dreamed I would be here today. But God, my yeah. willingness to get to a place where I was real talk. I was real talk, Kim, and I remember he sent me. 35 things through my son that he loves about me. And that's when I realized that my son said, I love you, mama, on one of the quizzes. He said, I love you, mama, because you're real talk, because you don't lie, because you don't have to fabricate, because you're so honest about yourself. And you know what? That's what the world wants. The world don't want to hear we ain't never done anything wrong. The world don't want to hear the phony and the fake that everything's so, because because social media will have everybody. Look, you, you, you want to be everybody. Their life is perfect. Their marriage is perfect. And they're all showing you only the highlight reels. Today, whatever you're going through that are watching us, the worst case scenario of your story, God is of your saying to you today, before you were ever even a thought in your mother's womb, your mother, y'all, you're watching this feeling like you done, you done thrown in the towel because something didn't work out that you wanted it to. Because you feel like that your, your divorce caused you to be on the clearance rack instead of the Holy Ghost couture rack. All God right. is saying to you today, that's what he said to me, Kimberly, get up. Get up. I've got the world. I've got millions of people that need to know that I am a God, that even if they were the only one still in this world, I would have still got off of the throne and onto the cross and stretched my arms out wide for those that everybody else walked out on. That's what God wants to do. He wants you to be transparent. He wants you to tell your story. He wants to turn your scars into stars. He wants to turn your wounds into wisdom. He wants to use your pain as your pulpit. Will you let him? The first connection to letting God do it is freedom from people and from faking it until you make it. Instead of faking it, just make it. Tell your story. Be honest and let God use you. He will. That's what he's waiting on. You know, if we look in the Bible, Pastor, every person, I mean, David committed adultery and then had the, the husband killed. But yet he was still said that the, the, he, he's the, the man after my own heart. You know, we've got Jonah that disobeyed God and God sent a big whale and said, well, go follow Jonah. He's going to need transportation back to where I told him to be in the first place. You know, there's so many people in the Bible, but yet we don't look at that because yeah. we get caught up in religion. Oh. And so you got to, that's where Real Talk Kim came from. Real Talk Kim came, this name, everything about me came from God. God did it and I'm just walking it out. He's opened the doors and I'm just walking with him. You don't have to push. You don't have to pull. You ain't got to bargain. You ain't got to plead. You ain't got to sell your soul. You ain't got to kiss no behinds. When oh. God is in it, he will open the windows of heaven over oh. your life and you will live a pinch me life where every day you're thinking, how in the world did this happen? How did I even get here? And God's saying, because you're the generational curse breaker in your family. I want to use you, baby. That's what he's saying, Pastor, today to somebody. I want to use you. I want to take your story all over the world. Everybody's got a story, but yours is going to be a bestseller if you just say yes. My gosh. I, I received that right there. Yes, yes. I, I, I love what you said there. I, I'm reminded of, of course, Mary. 
she came before Jesus, uh, you know, uh, broken. And she broke her alabaster bar at his feet. And the Bible says that that story will now be told all around the world. <laughs> when you are willing to be broken at the feet of Jesus. Come on. Broken like the alabaster box, pouring your soul, pouring out your perfume. Yes. Here's wage, your annual, annual wage. When you're willing to just pour yourself out, doesn't matter who's in the room, who's looking, who's saying anything, then your story. We'll Come on, Pastor. The world. So I, I think that's incredible because we need to be real. We need to be transparent. We need to be real with ourselves. Um, ma'am, I, I, I sense right now, you know, unfortunately, a lot of ministries are not making it. You know, uh, I'm really big on longevity. You know, I've been a full-time yeah. ministry 11 years now. My father's a pastor. I'm a PK myself. And, you know, I, I'm really big in longevity because that's what ministry is. It's about legacy. It's about generation to generation. But, you know, today, a lot of ministries are closing down. They're being shut down. People are being exposed. People are falling. And, of course, this does not discount the gospel of grace. I just feel the power of the gospel when you're sharing, man, because this really is about the gospel of Jesus, which is the gospel yes. of grace. But, you know, in this day and age, there's also the fear of the Lord and the reverence of God because there's such a severity to the things of God. I mean, you know, things are, are being, you know, just posted worldwide on social media, public, you know, things are going rampant. And so there's the real, but there's also the counterfeit. And, uh, you know, how, how do we guard ourselves in a sense from wolves and sheep's clothing? How do we guard ourselves from ticklers of the ear? How do we, I mean, the, Jesus says that in the end times, the first sign will be worldwide deception. And so, I mean, how do, how do we stay real and be connected to the real thing, to the real Jesus, rather than the Jesus we want to make in our own cultural image? You know, Pastor, what I've done is I've even, I've, I'm telling you something. I was the queen of believing in the wolves and sheep clothing. I just, I just, my heart just loves people, you know? And so yeah. I have learned to, I mean, every single day of my life, I have gotten to a place where I, I pray first thing in the morning, God, guard me, protect me, allow me to and, and, and allow me to fear you. Don't ever let me ever lead anybody away from you. And don't ever allow me just keep me connected to you in such a way that I will never even allow. Because if I give my platform. God is trusting me with millions of people. If I if I give my platform to one wrong wolf in sheep clothing, and I've done it, I've done it, okay. where I will give my platform or I'll allow somebody on my platform and then they turn out to be a, a wolf, a, a snake, and they are, they are leading people just uh, with a crazy message. And I've learned now that I pray before I ever connect. And I listen to the Holy Spirit in me, Pastor. I will listen. When I get one single, that something ain't right, I don't question myself. I just cut it off. I will cut it off in two seconds flat. Because I'm going to tell you something. I fear the Lord. When God trusts you with millions of people, when you get to heaven, he ain't going to come to Pastor Ben and say, Pastor Ben, you're going to stand before what I trusted Real Talk Quick Kim with. He's not going to come to Real Talk Kim and say, Kim, I'm, tr I'm, I'm going to make you stand in alignment for what Pastor Ben did. No, the blood of the sheep of every person that he trusts you with is going to be on your shoulders. You're going to stand before God. So I take that seriously. In this season of my life, I take it seriously. I watch people's fruit. I watch their fruit. And if their fruit is nasty, I, I look at who they hang out with. All right. If I, I, I listen, I won't even take pictures with everybody because I know some people, they ain't, they, uh, they, they, they I know, I know what you're doing. <laughs> All right. And I ain't going to be letting nobody know that I, I, I condone this behavior. Yeah. When God gives you the world and he's trusting you with his kids, you got to be careful who you let in. I'm talking a lot of celebrity preachers, a lot of leaders, honey, uh -huh. that yeah. have had terrible character. 
and you over here wanting to fit in with them. And God's over here saying, no, I've called you to, I've set you apart. They may never like you because you won't give in and, and, and play uh -huh. games with them. But will you do it for me is what God's saying. That's who he's elevating. He's elevating the people with good fruit. He's elevating the people that can take a licking and keep on ticking. He's taking the people that nobody else saw coming and he's raising them up. Why? Because they've been on their knees getting ready. They've been on their knees. They thought the curtain had closed, but the and the production was over. But really what God was doing was he was separating the wheat and the tear. And he's bringing them up. You hear me? So what's your fruit, baby? What's your fruit? If your fruit's right, you got about, listen, you can get your fruit right in about an hour. You can get on your knees and get your fruit right and watch God move. That's, that's what he's doing, Pastor. How's your heart? Do you really fear the Lord? Yeah. And when you, when you fear the Lord, you careful about who's around you. That's the season I'm in, man. I, Pastor, I am so careful. My God. I'm careful. Man, man, there's such a fire uh, in this broadcast. Uh, you know, uh, I love what you said again. This this really is a season of separation. Yeah. Uh, a revealing, exposing manifestation. Uh, the wolves, and, or excuse me, the goats and the sheep, the wheat and the tear. And I really feel like, again, more and more we're going to see more distinction of who really belongs to the Lord and who doesn't. Um, and I sense, uh, you know, of course, I know uh, you pastor a church, an incredible church, a limitless church. Yeah. In uh, but your church hasn't shut down. And I, I applaud you. I, I respect you even more for that. Yeah. Uh, because we are the church. We're essential. And we need to reach people today more than ever. And people need to be gathering and coming together today more than ever yeah uh, you know I, I feel like again there's there's such uh, a divide and even a separation because god's wanting to release a greater glory yes and I think that those people who are taking a stand right now for the hard things for yeah. the difficult things taking a stand for the things that god really values and that's really biblical and is really important to his heart he's yeah. going to promote bless and he's going to show off to the world. Yeah. And a closing thoughts. I mean, this broadcast is so rich today about breaking yeah. You know, I, I'm always fascinated about people. Uh, you know, you used the term earlier, celebrity preachers, pastors. You were on uh, Preachers of <laughs> Africa. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you're on some of the uh, 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 the nation's biggest platforms. And yeah. Been, you know, TV, et cetera. But, you know, how do we keep our hearts pure? Yeah. And how do we continue to, you know, uh, in a sense, walk in the will and the fear of God in the midst of the fruits and the blessings and the prosperity and, and the greatness that God entrusts us with? But how do we not stumble like Solomon? How do we not stumble like David? And how do we continue to go from glory to glory? You know, I think with me, even when I did Preachers of Atlanta, um, I was so careful because I knew that, again, I'm going to lead people to Jesus or I'm going to lead them away. And no amount of likes or followers is going to make me go to hell for you. Right. And so I think that's what we have to decide. We have to decide that, God, I'm not going to drop my morals. I'm going to I'm going to keep my heart right. I mean, two years ago, God took me on a journey. He said, there's some things in your life you need to get right. There's some things that you're doing behind closed doors that you need to get right, whether it's drinking wine or whether it's whatever it is that's causing you to stumble a little bit. I believe that's what God's doing this year, Pastor. He's given us a chance to get some things in order because we are walking into the greatest revival of our lives. Yes. He says that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, I will. And that's what we're doing. You got some people like me that are savages, right? We are Holy Ghost ninjas. We are yeah. spiritual gangsters. And, and I believe that's what God's doing. I think that you have to constantly, it is not Pastor Ben's job to keep your heart right. It's not Real Talk Kim's job to keep your heart right. We're here to lead you to Jesus. But what you do with it from there is your own. It, it's you. And nothing's going to change in your life because we lay hands on you. It is it is a time at right now where we begin to separate ourselves and lay at his feet and say, God, search my heart. And if there is anything that grieves your heart, then heal me. I give you permission. I surrender everything. Break my heart for what breaks yours. And I think that's the key. Truly, 
loving Jesus, falling in love with Jesus and living for Jesus. That's the game. That, it seems so simple, but that's the key. Well, wow, praise God. Love is the key. Um, yeah. I've taught many times that leadership is lovership. Yeah. And I mean, that is a great commission. The great commission is the great commandment, which is love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love one another as you love yourselves. Man, uh, there's so many people watching, they don't even love themselves. No. You know, I mean, they, they don't, you know, they're not grateful for where they are in life. And of course, we all got a story. We all have scars, etc. But I sense right now, ma'am, even as we're bringing the show today to a close, that people need a breakthrough in their soul. They need a breakthrough yeah. uh, because they're, they're looking around. The Bible says, may you prosper as your soul prospers. So the reason why your ministry, your business, your influence is not expanding is because God wants to do a deeper work in you as your soul prospers. So, ma'am, I, I want you to bless those leaders, those emerging leaders, aspiring leaders right now, maybe a single mother or a single father, somebody who's bankrupt right now. I want you to pray a breaker anointing over those leaders and those emerging leaders today. Yes. Father, we just thank you. I mean, I am so excited after this broadcast today. I just feel a fire. I feel a fire that is being ignited back in the hearts of those that are now even in a numb season where they don't even feel nothing. They they feel like they have been badgered. They feel like they have, man, they stepped out on faith and then the pandemic hit and then they were they were moving into a new level and then all of a sudden the pandemic hit and I thank you today, God, that we are standing on that verse that says, do not get weary from well-doing. You will, if you, if you do not get weary and well-doing, uh, in due season, you will reap. And I, I thank you today, God, that this is our due season, yeah. that today we're about to see a shift, that today you will set us free from comparing our lives to others, to wanting to sound like others, to wanting to look like others, to wanting to fit in with others. And today, Lord, we get our eyes off of all the circumstances around us and we begin to put it instead of horizontal we get vertical let us fall back in love with you god let us get back into a place where we surrender everything over to you and i thank you because of this broadcast today you said one will put a thousand to flight two will put ten thousand and me and pastor ben and all over the world prayer warriors and intercessors are coming together and we are believing that today is the best day of the rest of our lives yes. that god we ain't lost nothing we ain't lost nothing in this pandemic that god you're moving us from the back of the line to the front of the line you just gave us a chance to reset to recalibrate so, Lord, anything in our hearts that is not of you, get it right so that you can pull us back like a slingshot and let us fly. Lord, I thank you that this is the beginning of the best season of our lives all over the world, all over the country. God, we say yes to you today. Now, do anything you want with us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Wow. Amen, amen, and amen. This is your due season, people yeah. of God. There is breakthrough available. Yes. Come it, embrace it, get used to breakthrough because yeah. he's Lord of the breakthrough and he's your king. Real talk, Kim. We love you. Thank you so much for having us, uh, for, for being on our show. Yes. We're so blessed, so honored. God bless you, man. Thank you, guys. Love all of you. Wow. People of God, that was real talk, Kim. Wasn't that just real? I mean, so beautiful, so powerful. Uh, so blessed to have her today. And uh, this is Pastor Ben Lim with The Breaker, where we're believing for breakthrough in every area of your life. Now, I want you to comment below what spoke to you the most. Were you ministered to? I mean, did you just get a Holy Ghost wake-up call in your spirit? We want you to comment below what spoke to you, what ministered to you. And make sure you subscribe, follow. God bless until the next episode of The Breaker.